Hey, today what I'm going to talk about is flint and steel. I'm going to talk about what I have in my kit, uh, you know, what I take out to practice with and how I made it. Uh, if you watch my old hickory videos, uh, the one on flint and steel, I use the back of my old hickory as the steel part of the flint and steel. That's not normally what I would do, uh, unless this is all I had with me, uh, you know, I found a piece of flint out there. Uh, but normally, I don't use this because what you're doing is you're actually taking a chip out of the blade every time you strike it with the flint. So I don't do that because I don't ruin, ruin the back of my knife. So what I have is a file. Now, what you have to do is you have to be careful. You have to make sure that you get uh, you know, one of the older files. You don't want to get one of the newer ones. Uh, they're not as much uh, high carbon steel in them. Uh, basically what I do, you can carry the whole uh, big piece with you if you wanted. Um, for me, I kind of snap the ends of it off. And one thing you want to do though is if your file has the filings on the sides, you want to hit that with the grinding wheel and you want to grind those off there. You could leave those on there and you will get some sparks off of it, but it's going to chew up your flint. Uh, it's going to really take chunks right out of your flint whenever you do that. So if you can see on mine, uh, I filed it down and I try to keep it nice and smooth. Even after I've used it for a little bit, you come back, hit it on the grinding wheel and smooth it right back out. Now, the nice thing about using this as your flint and steel is I also have a file with me when I'm out in the woods uh, to use for sharpening my knife or whatever I need to do. So, so I'll just show you. Uh, I'm not sure this is going to work out here. Basically what I did was I put my file in a vise and just kind of smacked it with a hammer and it snaps right in half. I'm going to try just stepping on this log and doing it just to show you how to do it. So, remember, safety first. And you can see how easy that was. Just snapped right in half, uh, and then it'll fit in your kit a little better, especially if you have a bigger file like I have. Uh, now, I haven't sanded the sides off on this one or ground the sides off on this one, so I'm not going to use this one. Uh, so I'm going to use the one that I carry in my kit. Now, another thing um, is out is, you know, they call it flint and steel, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a piece of flint. Uh, quartz will work. Uh, there's chert out there that'll work. Um, now, what I did was uh, I got some online that was chert, and it didn't work as well. I didn't get a lot of sparks off of it. So if you can get a piece of flint, especially for practicing, uh, that's a good thing to get. Now another thing, uh, here in Pennsylvania, we have a lot of sandstone. You might be tempted to try to use this sandstone. Now, I've used it and I've tried it and gotten some sparks off of it, but you don't get near the sparks off that you need to get a real fire going. Uh, maybe you'll get lucky one time, but I really doubt it. I'll try to show you here in the... I don't know if you can tell. I mean, I got like three sparks, you know, out of all that time. And once we get to the piece of flint, then I think you'll see why this doesn't work. So, here's what I have. Uh, this flint's actually from Ohio. I haven't really been able to find any around here in Pennsylvania, so I kind of ordered it off of eBay. Um, it was a pretty good deal. I got a nice big box for like 10 bucks, so it it's been lasting me quite a while. Now, the basics of flint and steel are, you want to have a sharp edge on your piece of flint, and you want to just kind of glance off of the steel. You don't want to come at a 90 degree angle even you know a 45 you just kind of want to you want to almost miss it is what you're trying to do and then that way you're going to shave the sparks off and they're going to fly off of there now what i'm going to do first if you can tell this piece of flint uh, i've been using uh for practicing a couple times here so it's not very sharp on the edges so i'm going to show you what kind of sparks you get from a piece that's not very sharp and then i'm going to show you a piece that's been sharpened or napped it's not really been sharpened you just um, kind of snap off the ends of it and you'll get sharp edges on there so I'm hoping you can see that in a close-up camera here uh, I can plainly see it here I mean the sparks are kind of going all over the place um, 
And that is the thing about flint and steel is trying to direct this down to your material. So the next thing I want to talk about is the material that I use because you need to, to catch that spark onto something. Uh, you can't just do it into your tinder bundle or anything else. You have to have something uh, that will catch that spark and glow or burn with an ember. So, uh, one of the obvious things and the easiest things and the best thing to have with you is some char material. Now in here, uh, I have some just some cotton cloth that I charred. I also have some cattail. Uh, I even have somewhere in here there's a charred piece of punk wood that I threw in here. Uh, but mostly as you can see I have some char cloth in there. And you want to try to keep your tin filled with this and I'll show you why once we get to that. <clears throat> so let's say you're out and you don't have any char cloth. You didn't bring any with you. You don't even have any material to make it. You know even if you had another fire going. So what do you do? Well. One of the things out there is chaga. This grows on living birch trees. Uh, it's very distinct once you see it. Uh, it actually looks like, if you can tell, it looks like burnt wood on the outside of it, and it's a hard crust, like a hard wooden crust. But when you get on the inside, uh, it's got that orangish tan uh, color to it, and it's real, almost kind of spongy uh, when you push on it. And you'll be able to tell but that's what it is just by its appearance here. Plus it grows on uh, living birch trees. It grows on another tree too, but I can't remember what that is right now. Around here, we have a lot of birch trees. So if I was gonna look for chaga, that's where I would head is to a birch tree. Now this is the biggest piece of chaga I ever found. And it works out really nice um, for a demonstration because you can see it up. Hopefully you guys can see it up close. Um, you can see the burnt area and it also has the exposed underside there. Usually what you're going to find is probably a smaller piece like this, uh, and this will still work. Um, what we'll do, I'll show you here, we'll, uh, if you have your saw with you, uh, here's that um, Sawzall blade holder that I have, and what you can do is you're, we're actually going to just kind of shave this off, uh, not into like dust, but if you can just get it a little bit more than that, uh, you'll see that it'll come off in bigger chunks. And the bigger chunks are very spongy, like I said. So uh, and if you can get them off there and get some surface area, we'll be able to catch a spark. Another thing you can use, uh, and I have a couple examples here, are uh, horse hoof fungus. Now this, is uh, a little different than the chaga. The chaga pretty much once you get to that inner soft spongy layer uh, that stuff will catch a spark. For this what you need to do is you need to cut it down and you'll see uh, it's actually really pretty cool looking when you get it there. It has uh, the spore tubes here and when you see it it's just like tiny little straws through there. I don't know if you'll be able to pick that up uh, with the camera here. But this layer up here above that between the hard outer layer and inside here, uh, that's kind of like the chaga. It's nice and fluffy. You know, almost like a cottony fluffy in there. So what you have to do is you have to get that material out of there and then that, use that to catch your spark. So this is just a cross section here. I just shaved it off to show you. Now, um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go with some chaga first and I'm going to show you how to um, do it with the chaga. Now you don't have to shave this down, you know, if you don't have your saw with you or whatever, but I think it comes out, uh, gives you uh, a lot more surface area there to catch your spark if you can get a nice pile of this going. Uh, hopefully you can see in the close-up camera there have a nice little pile of this here uh, some of it shavings and some of it is a little bigger pieces these are a little easier once you get a uh, spark on there or get an ember uh, to handle and what you can do is you know if you get it on one little piece you can pick up some of the other pieces and put in there and combine them and then you can get it or once you get it uh, onto your pieces that you have shaved off you can put it back onto the bigger piece and you can get this whole piece ignited. If we had an ember going in this piece of this size, this would last a long time. It'll just sit there and smolder and it'll give you a lot of time to get a fire started. So, 
what I'm going to do is take another piece of flint I have here and hopefully you can see that it has nice sharp edges on it. And that's what I'm going to use to demonstrate uh, to get this chaga going here. What you have to be careful of because you are striking down on this is to not strike into your material and spread it all over the place. So that takes a little bit of practice and that's why you should get out there and practice these skills. Hopefully you can see, uh, compared to the dull one, I'm getting just a whole pile of sparks flying off of this piece. And there we go, I think I already have something uh, smoldering in there. Now it's just a little piece in there, it didn't actually land on one of my big pieces, so what I'm going to do is take my saw or my knife, and I'm going to try to just pick this up. Now once I get it picked up, like I said, I can transfer it over. To one of these bigger pieces. And just real, if you just blow real gently on it, it's just going to keep going once you get a, a bigger one there. It actually, uh, it's hard to even put out. I mean, without using water, it's really hard to get this to go out once you get it going. So, what I'm doing here, I'm just getting a little pile of it here. It's actually burning through onto my finger. That's how quick it's going. Hopefully you can see this. And like I said, it will. I'm just going to lay it here. And I'm going to put the rest of it that we had. And I think you're going to actually see this is just going to sit here. And it's just going to smolder. Now this will never burst into flames, so you're still going to need your tinder bundle once you get this ember going, you're going to need to put it in your tinder bundle. But what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to show you how to use our char cloth for this. And I'm going to show you, I mean you saw I had to, I struck that quite a few times to get the sparks to go in there. And hopefully I'll show you with the char cloth how much easier it is and why it's a good thing to carry this with you. Now, what I said before was about, you know, having a lot in your tin. Because what you want to do is you want to just leave it in your tin while you're doing the sparks. And it'll make it a lot easier. You'll have a bigger area that can catch your sparks. And then once it gets on a piece, you just take that piece out, put it in your tinder bundle, blow it into flames, and you put the rest back in your metal tin and shut it up. And it'll get, once the oxygen's gone, it'll just smother itself out. So... What I'm actually going to do here too is I'm going to use that doll piece of flint that I had just to show you that it, it does still work, but uh, it's not as easy to get that spark when you're using the doll piece here. There we go. Like I said, we got that. Just a couple shots with a dull piece of flint even and you can see it'll do the same thing it's just gonna keep smoldering away if you need some more time uh, actually yep, I got another piece in here you got to watch because it's pretty windy out here today so uh, it is smoldering up flaring up there so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take these pieces I'm gonna lay them in my tinder bundle here and remember, you know, I have a few others, so if it looks like this is going out because it's burning pretty quick because of the wind, I'm just going to throw another piece in there, and it'll just catch on to that too. But, then with our tinder bundle, we're going to make sure we hold it above our head when we blow into it. And I always like to start out gently and then just kind of increase as I'm blowing into it. Once you get it, make sure you don't drop it right away. You want to let it build up a little bit. Then you're going to flip it over when you put it down. There's actually some snow in there, so it kind of went out a little bit when I put it down. Uh, so that's the flint and steel. It's what I carry in my kit. I carry a couple pieces of flint, uh, one of the steel, and I definitely have a full char tin whenever I go out. Like I said, I still have some stuff. Uh, if you can see it, it's still smoldering in here. So all I'm going to do is dump it back into my tin. I'm going to shut the lid up. As long as you have uh, a nice tin that the lid fits on nice, it'll just smother that flame right out. 
or that ember right out. Okay, well, I think that's about uh, everything I have today for the flint and steel. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to come back with some more. I have a whole fire series I want to do showing different ways to start a fire and stuff. So, but that's it for flint and steel today. As you can see, uh, that chaga we had is still smoldering away here. <laughs>